I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and this cute bunny is the new pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club. So when I say new, it is June 1st, 2024, and if you are in the Funny Faces Club, you should already have gotten a copy, a link to download this cute bunny pattern. If you're not in the club yet and you join any time in the month of June, this is the pattern that you're going to get instantly. If you're watching this video and it is months or years even after June 2024, you can find this pattern in the shop at shinyhappyworld.com. Here's how to make it. Okay, this is the video where I am showing you how to assemble this bunny if you do not have a light box. So I have got my background block already um, quilted to the batting, which is how I like to do things for my version of Quilt As You Go and I've got all of my pieces cut out. That means I've got them cut out around the solid lines, and I've got all of these dotted lines that are inside each piece. Those are placement guides showing you where the applique is going to go, and I have transferred those over to the paper side, to the fabric side of each piece. So this one is kind of a, usually I use a chalk, a white chalk, and you can see that on this darker green. But on this lighter green, it didn't show up as well, so I just used a pencil on that. Hopefully you can see that. And then I also transferred, you'll see in addition to those dotted lines, you'll see some sol solid lines inside the pieces. Those are not placement guides, those are stitching lines, and so you want to transfer those as well. And for that, I use just a fine tip Sharpie. It doesn't matter that it's permanent because I'm going to stitch over all of these black lines with black thread, and so you will never see that black marker line again. So, let's get started assembling these pieces. So I like to start with the shoulder piece. Uh, I am doing this one what I call snapshot style, so I want it to look like I have snapped a photo of this bunny, and I have zoomed way in on his face. So he has shoulders and a body, they're just cropped out of the picture. And to get that look, I'm gonna line the straight edge up at the bottom of the shoulder piece with the raw edge at the bottom edge of my block. Now, if you do not want to have yours uh, snapshot style, you can do it what I like to call emoji style, and that is just with the head floating in the middle of the block. And if you do that, you just need to leave off the shoulder piece. So I'm gonna take the head now. There is a line, one of those placement guides is a line at the top edge of the neck. So as soon as I cover that line, I know I have enough overlap to be able to wash this and have it be an actual quilt that is used. So now I'm gonna take one of the ear pieces and that also has a little line there. I'm going to tuck that behind the head until that line is covered. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the ear on the other side. And it's pretty obvious once you start doing it which ear is which, but if you want to know, there is uh, all of the pieces are numbered and there is a placement guide that comes with each pattern and that will tell you which ear is which. So now you know that we are looking, working, we've got piece number three, so that must be the right ear. So we're gonna just tuck that behind as well, again, just until that marking line is covered. And now I have some inner ears. So piece five is the one that goes on this side, the ear that we just, uh, that we just tucked. So we're gonna now do the same thing. I've got that line that I transferred. I'm just gonna tuck it until it covers. And I've also got a line up here and I just wanna make sure that that covers that line as well. So when you're all done, all of your markings should be covered except for your stitching lines, but all of these placement guides should be covered up. So you don't have to worry about erasing them or anything like that. Just make sure that you use a light enough color so that if you have a light fabric going over it, it uh, will not show through. So for these eyes and the nose, I went ahead and just used the black Sharpie Normally I wouldn't use those for placement guides because it will show through a lot of fabrics, but I knew I was going to applique that with just a solid black nose and eyes, and so I went ahead and used the black. But normally I would use something very light colored, as light as possible that still shows up on the fabric. So my first choice is always white chalk, and then I will switch to pencil if needed. 
So there we go. All right, I'm gonna very carefully carry this over to my ironing board, press everything in place. I'll do all of my outline stitching and then I will bring it back and show you this finished bunny and also three other bunnies that I made in different colors for a few different projects that I'm working on. So here's the finished bunny block. I did all of the outline stitching in black thread. That's kind of my favorite way to do it. It gives it a little bit of a cartoony look. And I did add a couple of catch lights to the eyes. It just helps to bring them to life. And the pattern has a link to a video showing a few different ways to do that. Um, this is one that I made in colors for a farm quilt that I'm working on. A, it's, a, it's all different farm animals and they all have um, the animals are all made out of this kind of ginghamish print and then some coordinating prints from the farmer's market blenders. And the background blocks are also from the farmer's market collection. So all of the colors are pulled from uh, realistic fruits and vegetables. So they're bright, clear colors, but just a little bit desaturated. But I have made bunnies in a few more colors, too, for a few different quilts that I'm working on. So for this one... I made a white bunny, and it's uh, it's actually from the oyster blenders, and the background is from the surf blenders. So all of both of those are from the sea breeze collection. So it's all kind of beachy, um, sun washed, faded kind of colors. And this is for a collection that I'm putting together of all Arctic animals. So they'll all be colors from the sea breeze blenders for the faces, and all of the backgrounds are going to be these surf, this kind of muted blue. And I've got another one. So this is another white bunny, but this one uses blenders from the, uh, the Animal Kingdom collection. So these are all a different shade of white, a little bit brighter white and uh, brighter grays. And the background blocks for all of the ones in this collection are from the Strawberry Blenders collection. So it's going to be all different pets um, on pink backgrounds. And then I've got one more version of the bunny that I made. So again, this is another one that's in realistic colors. So this is also from the Animal Kingdom's um, blenders, all, all the shades of brown. That are, that I call them grizzly blenders. And the background block is from the avocado blenders. So this is for a collection that I'm working on of woodland animals that are all in natural colors for the animals from the Animal Kingdom blenders and all avocado greens for the background blocks. So that is the bunny block, the new pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club for June. I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and I will see you next month.